Well, I've forgotten how much work it actually is to start a company. It's a lot of work. And you've got to do everything. You've got to come up with a name. You've got to come up with a logo. You, I mean, in addition to designing the product, you've got to figure out what to design. You've got to figure out how you're going to get it to the marketplace. You've got to do a part number system. You've got to go get bank accounts. You've got to set up charts, general ledgers, get a management information system, get a little kitchen set up, get a coffee maker, all this stuff. More important than building a product, we are in the process of architecting a company that will hopefully be much, much more incredible. The total will be much more incredible than the sum of its parts. And the cumulative effort of approximately, you know, 20,000 decisions that we're all going to make over the next two years are going to define what our company is. And one of the things that made Apple great was that in the early days, it was built from the heart, not by somebody who came in and said, I know how to build a company. Here's what you do. Da, 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 da. It wasn't built that way. It was built from the heart. Now, unfortunately, we didn't always use our heads. And we can do better in many respects because we are wiser and smarter and know more and those kinds of things. But one of the most important things, one of, one of my largest wishes is that we build next from the heart. And that people that are thinking about coming to work for us or buying our products or who want to sell us things feel that. That we're doing this because we have a passion about it. We're doing this because we really care about the higher educational process. Not because we want to make a buck. Not because, you know, we just want to do it to do it. Well, my first saying is that the honeymoon is over. <laughs> uh, all of those wonderful things that we got for just being are now sort of just old news. We are like every other startup. We've been a company now for six months. And uh, yes, you could say that, well, we had a, you know, a lawsuit for four of those months and we had this and that. But the bottom line is the world doesn't really care. What the world cares about is what we produce. We've been a startup for six months. We've been spending money like we've been a startup for six months. And in some areas, we've, we've really <laughs> produced a lot. Uh, we've got a lot to show for six months in some areas. In other areas, we don't have a lot to show for six months. So I hope that throughout this retreat, we tend to make sure that our feet are on the ground and we realize that we're going to be judged like every other startup from here on out, and that is by what our product is and how timely we bring it to market. Not on the fact that we're next. Not on the fact that we were sued. Not on the fact that we're really good people who had a lot to do with Macintosh. That stuff's irrelevant at this point. We just go out and we buy brand new Macintoshes and brand new hard disks for everybody. And it's not at all clear. I don't think we're getting great deals on that stuff. We're not scrounging. Well, we're no not, one, we're not, the Mac owners bring their Mac from Well, home. we're not, we're not, I mean, we used to be, we used to find people to get us really good employee discounts on things and everything else. And we stopped scrounging, mean, we stopped nickel and, diming. nickel and diming for that stuff. And it all adds up. One of the things I don't see is, I don't see it myself. I don't see it in the, re in enough of the rest of us is I don't see that that startup hustle. In other words, if we zoom out at the big picture, it would be a shame to have lost the war because we won a few battles. And I sort of feel like I and some of the rest of us are concentrating too much on the smaller battles. Um, we have to keep and we're not keeping the war in perspective. And the war is called survival. The war is called not run out of money until we get our product on the market. There needs to be someone who is sort of the um, keeper and reiterator of the vision. Uh, because there's just a ton of work to do. And a lot of times, you know, when you have to walk a thousand miles and you take the first step, it looks like a long ways. And it really helps if there's someone there saying, well, we're one step closer. You know, the, the goal definitely exists. It's not just a mirage out there. So in a thousand and one little and sometimes larger ways, the vision needs to be reiterated. I do that a lot. One of the things I've always found is that you've got to start with the customer experience and work backwards to the technology. You can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you're going to try to sell it. And I've made this mistake probably more than anybody else in this room. And I've got the scar tissue to prove it. And I know that it's the case. And as we have tried to come up with a strategy 
and a vision for Apple, um, it started with what incredible benefits can we give to the customer? Where can we take the customer? Not, not starting with, let's sit down with the engineers and, and figure out what awesome technology we have and then how are we going to market that. Um, and I think that's the right path to take. The third reason that people are moving in, which is one that I think will not become paramount in 1991, but within 24 months will be the largest reason people are buying our computers, is interpersonal computing. Improving group productivity and collaboration through the use of sophisticated desktop computers. And right now, when we first meet a customer, we tell them about interpersonal computing. I'm sure most of them would rather hear about the custom app solutions and the great productivity apps that we have. But as these customers become educated in the sales cycle, I'm sure all of you have seen the value of interpersonal computing rise in their eyes. And as we are successful, customer by customer, over the next year to 18 months, interpersonal computing will be something that rises on the customer's agenda of what's important, even as we walk in the door. As Regis McKenna once said, the best marketing is education. And as we accomplish that education, more and more customers are going to be asking us about interpersonal computing uh, versus us having to educate them. No